Hey, I'm Dave from Solvent Printer Guys, formerly Solvent Printer Conversion. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, a Roland VS300 here that we just were getting ready to ship out the door and I want to make sure that uh, if you're watching this that you know a little bit about basic operation of this machine and some features of it. Um, so super simple, you've got your control panel over here. On the back side of every Roland printer there's going to be a main power switch. And so uh, as you're getting things set up and all that um, for everyday use, you want to leave that back power switch on and leave it connected to power. Uh, but the front power switch you can have on or off. Um, it is important to leave back power connected and turned on to any Roland EcoSolvent printer because uh, throughout the day or, or during the evening when you're not around, it's going to wake up and run a miniature cleaning cycle and that helps to keep fresh ink pulling through the heads and decrease the chance of the nozzles clogging up. If you shut down the power on the back and or unplug the machine, it's gonna prevent the machine from doing that and it's gonna cause your heads to prematurely clog up. So be careful about that. And so then you've just got your basic power button here. Tap that, the machine's gonna wake up here and come to life. Oh, and of course it's gonna remind me to close this cover because there's sensors all over this machine to remind you of things and keep your hands out of harm's way. Um, so we'll give this a, just a second to load up and uh, this machine has got two of these covers, one on each end. This one's going to give you access to where the print heads park. This one's going to give you access to where the print heads go during a manual cleaning, which I'll show you in another video. Um, and that is also an important thing to keep up on in terms of maintenance. When you do get this uh, to your shop and you're setting things up, you're going to need to configure the network port on this to be a valid uh, network connection or, or a network IP address, my apologies, network IP address for your network. This will use a static IP address, meaning it's an IP address that is gonna be the same each and every day and it's assigned by the printer control panel. Um, so you'll need to check with your IT guy, or if you do that yourself, make sure that you have a, an IP address available on your network that is unique, it is not going to conflict with anything else, and then and when you're getting your machine set up, you can assign that to it. Um, every network may use different uh, IP address sequences, so when you get it, it may not be correct, but you can certainly do that. So, a couple quick things. Right now, this one it already did a, a setup and so it says W28.1. That means that in the width of the media that we have loaded here, between this pin troller and this pin troller, it has measured that it has an available print width of 28.1 inches. When you do the setup, this cut carriage comes out and it's looking for where this pin troller is and where this pin troller is and that's how it knows where, where it is. These pin trollers have to be placed and they can be moved when you raise this up they have to be placed within these blue marks. Um, so you have a range of adjustability of this right one between any of these three blue marks. And this left one can be here, here, or here to maximize the use of your space. If you put the pin troller here, it's going to give you an error. Same with if you put this pin troller here. That is because it's sitting on top of what's called the grit rollers, which are underneath these, and when they push down, that's what causes your media to advance. So when you load in some new material, line it up nice and pretty, put these pinch rollers just inside the outside edges, but underneath the blue marks, and lower the load lever, lower the cover, and then if we watch through the plexiglass cover, you'll see that this carriage is going to come out and it's going to stop real briefly at each of those pinch roller marks, and measure that. Um, and this is what you're gonna do for each and every roll of material that you put in or sheet of material. Um, the process is gonna be the same. And so you can see how it pauses just for a second there as it's going past those uh, pin trollers, as it's scanning those, determining the position, and it's gonna come back over here and tell us our, our, avail our available width. So this time, because I nudged them around, it, we've got 28.4. If you're in a country where you prefer to be set up in millimeters, this machine can also think in uh, millimeters and think in uh, in metric instead of in, in a, you know the standard silly system that we use in America. So um, when you 
do want to run a test print, which is important and I'd recommend running on a frequent basis. Get a function down to cleaning over to the right and then where that symbol showing that means enter so we press enter now this is going to warm up a little bit this machine has an integrated media heating system underneath the path of the media so it's going to take just a little bit and it's going to warm up let me pause it for a second hitting hitting the pause button on that actually bypasses the heat up oh, so you can, well, if you want to say that at all well good cause let's, let's do that so if you're in a hurry to do this uh you can press the pause button here and it'll go ahead and do the test print without heating up. Um, so, just doing a real quick cleaning cycle on its own here, and then it'll come out and it'll show us the pretty test print. Uh, this is something I recommend running on a very frequent basis so that you can chart the health of your print heads, um, especially if you have some downtime, run this, run some other small things. Uh, let me just lift this up so you can see. So you see we've got our full test print here. This is what this should look like. You shouldn't have missing nozzles, you shouldn't have gaps, you shouldn't have wayward nozzles, it should look nice and clean. If that doesn't look right when you run it, then what you wanna do is go back to the function and instead of test print, you want to go to one of your cleanings, either normal, medium, or powerful. You know, start with a normal and then run the test print again, see how it goes. Um, so that's some real basic stuff. Let me show you just a couple other things in here. Um, if we go to menu, we can go to system info and over to the right and down to network. This is where you're gonna change the IP address. This is what we have this set for on our network, but that, but that may not be a good setting for you on your network. So then you just go in here and press to the right and then change the number sequences up and down until they match an available IP address. And press enter when you get to the end of that. You'll also want to change the subnet mask if this is not the correct subnet mask for your network. Um, there is also a spot to change the gateway address, which usually I will try to set this correctly is where what your router is. Um, I've had these function fine without doing that, but it's a good idea. Uh, the MAC address is not something you're going to change. That's unique to the network card that is built into the machine. Um, so that's some important stuff. Uh, let me just show you one other thing because it's a little bit peculiar. During the startup of this machine from uh, storage or from shipping, uh, this machine is going to be flushed and it's not going to have, uh, not going to have ink in the lines. It's going to have cleaning solution in the lines. It's going to get all pumped out and everything. And this machine, in order to be able to properly clean and fill uh, the colors of ink as they go through, it's gonna use these dummy cartridges, which are a little different critter. And so let me just show you how that, how that works because it's a, it's a little different. These are refillable cartridges, which not everybody uses for this machine, but it's something that we've been using for testing this machine just fine. So inside the, uh, Inside these ink cartridge bays, there's little trap doors. And the trap doors mean that you can't just put something down and have it, have it get in there. But using this tool, which comes with the machine, it is, uh, it is set up with these funny little prongs and everything at the end to enable you to open two, two ink cartridge bays, two trap doors at a time. And by putting it down here and guiding it in there, if you see, I don't know if you can see in there, it'll open those right up and then you can insert your uh, your dummy cartridges right down in oh, I might have these backwards um, there we go that's better insert these dummy cartridges right down in which blocks the vacuum on the on the uh, at the needle which enables it to pull from just a pair of cartridges at a time. So during the ink fill process, um, it's gonna ask you to take in and out these dummy cartridges, take in and out cleaning cartridges, and take in and out ink cartridges in a certain sequence. And so this is a tool that you're gonna need to do that. Um, so, let me show you one more thing. Uh, this machine is compatible with Roland VersaWorks and 
it connects with a uh, with a network card. There we go. That's better. Um, it's going to connect with a network card. We're going to supply it to you if you get the machine from us or if you get it from somebody else. You're going to end up with Roland VersaWorks here. And you're going to, when you first start Roland VersaWorks, it's going to pull up a screen. So I can get it to pop up here. That's going to ask you to connect to your printer for the first time. Um, sometimes VersaWorks on this computer takes just a minute to uh, respond to us, but here we go. So the screen that you're going to see initially is going to look very similar to this. And it's going to have a spot for you to enter the TCP IP address. You'd want to pull this address from whatever you have assigned on the printer itself first. And then make sure that it's, uh, that it's a valid address and it's working. When you get to the end of entering that address in, you're going to want to press this verify button. And by pressing that verify button, it's going to reach out to that printer and verify that it is connected and that it does understand what it is. The license for using the Roland VersaWorks software is tied to that printer model and serial number. Down here it's going to show a whole status of what you're connected to. Um, and so the first time that you start up VersaWorks, that's what it's going to ask for. And as long as you can do that, then you should be able to get in and get going uh, with your software. So thanks. Hopefully this gives you a, a basic start. And I'm going to show you in a couple other things. We'll show you another video about doing a cleaning cycles, manual cleaning, wiper replacement, things like that. So thanks. This is Dave from Solvent Printer Guys, formerly Solvent Printer Conversion. I uh, hope this was helpful. See ya.